Okay, welcome to Space Arena Ultimate Python Turtle Graphics Game Tutorial Part 3. In this part, I'm going to talk about how to make the sprites move and how to up, use the update method, which we're going to add to our sprite class. Okay, so basically when you're playing a game, or when you're, you're programming a game, I should say, is probably better, you're going to be doing, you're going to have something called a, a main loop. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in here, main loop. And usually what we do is we do something like while true, or we could make a variable called while running, and we'll probably add that later. But for now, let's just use while true. And so here's the basic structure of our while true loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and put clear the screen. And so to do that, I'm gonna do pen.clear. Again, this is specific to the Python turtle module. If you were using Pygame, you'd have to do something different. But the principle is basically the same. Uh, and then in here, I'm going to do my, I'm going to call it, say, do game stuff. I'm not sure how else to put it. Do game stuff. And then finally, I'm going to actually do, I'm actually going to update the screen. And to do that, you use win.update. Oops, and I almost forgot. To also, you also have to do something up here called win.tracer0. And what that does is it shuts off the screen updates until you actually decide that you want it updated. This is what's going to speed up your program a lot. So just trust me on that one. Now, you can, now uh, if you get a question, what does Tracer do? Try just commenting it. This is this is a good practice. Comment that out and see what happens. See if it makes any changes for you. It might, it might not, but it probably will. Okay. So now you notice this is a while true loop. So it means this is going to run forever. So at this point, I don't need this code. The you know, now, if you're using something like PyCharm and you don't delete that, you're going to get an error. It says unreachable code because you can never actually get to that line. So it's good, you know, goodbye, good riddance. You could comment it out if you want to keep it. So in here, this is where we want our game to actually do some stuff. So the first thing we want to happen is we want to actually render all of our sprites. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put render sprites. Because now if I run this, watch what happens. You don't see anything. And that's because what happened is we rendered the sprite here, and then as soon as we got here, we cleared it. So we've got to put this part in the main loop. So you can see how now we're separating out the creation part of it from the rendering and the activity part of it, or the running part of it. Okay, so we've created some sprites here. And now down here, we're gonna render them each time through the loop. So let's go ahead and run that, make sure it works. Okay, and there's our, there are our sprites. Okay, now, this loop is running a certain number of times per second. Okay, I don't know what that, that number is. Now again, if you're using something like Pygame, you can actually just set that in Pygame. Pygame takes care of all that for you, which is great. One of the reasons I like to use the turtle module is because you can learn the real kind of bit more low level type stuff in game design where the, the, the module or the library isn't doing all of the work for you. It's only doing some of it. So I think this is a good learning experience, but once you get more experience, you just want to go use an engine and make your life a lot, a lot easier. So anyway, uh, so the next thing we want to do is we don't want our stuff to just sit there. We want it to actually move around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new method of my sprite class, and I'm going to call it update. Okay. And again, you got to use self here because I want to update the player by itself. I want to update the enemy by itself. I want to update the power up by itself. But note, what I'm doing so far is that they all have the same exact methods. There's no difference between the way they function yet, but we'll get to that later in a future video. So how I'm going to move stuff is I'm going to create something called dx. I'm going to set it equal to zero. And I'm going to use dy and set that equal to zero. And D is just, I, I don't know if it's scientific terminology, but it means delta X and delta Y. Delta means change. It's like it's from the Greek letters. So if your delta X and your delta Y are zero, you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to be sitting there exactly as you are. Okay. So what I need to do is in here, I'm going to say self.x plus equals self.dx. 
self dot y plus equals self dot dy. So this is my horizontal left and right speed. This is my vertical speed up and down. So if dx is positive, I'm going to move to the right. If dx is negative, I'll move to the left. Okay, if dy is positive, I move up. And if dy is negative, I move down. So what I'll do here is I'm going to go ahead with the player. I'm going to say player.dx equals 1. I'll go ahead and say enemy.dx equals negative 1. And we'll go ahead and make the power up. Uh, power up dot dy. Let's do dy equals plus, equals plus 1. Okay. Now, what I need to do, watch, I'm going to run it, and you'll see that nothing's going to happen. Okay. because I haven't called the update method. Okay, I have to call that down here. So I'm going to go ahead and make this update sprites. So I'm going to say player.update. And notice here, I just have self. Okay, so I don't have to put anything in here. Self comes from here for player. And I'll say enemy.update. I'm going to do powerup.update. Okay, let's go ahead and run that, and let's see how they move. Okay, so you can see how dx is going to go off the screen, and bye-bye. Okay, now we can, of course, there's no reason why we couldn't have player.dy equals 0 0.5, and enemy.dy equals negative 0 0.3. You, you can have an, literally any number you want there, power up dot dx equals, uh, let's say, 0 0.1. Just make it move just a little bit. Okay, so this is how we're going to get our, our objects to move around the screen. So you notice, we have right now a main game loop that is running. It updates each sprite, and then it renders each sprite. So notice that the updating and the rendering are separate actions. Okay? And this is a really hard concept for beginners to wrap their heads around. Updating it, at this point, you know, the sprite is just a mathematical object. It has numbers that represent its state. So its color, its xy coordinate, its dx, its dy. They represent the current state of the object. And until we render it, we don't have to render it. We only render it so human beings can see it. The rendering is a separate process. Now, you can see here how my, my code is going to start getting longer. Let's say I have 10 power-ups and 27 enemies. I don't want to do it this way. So let's go ahead and just shorten this up a little bit. So I'm going to make a list, uh, sprites list. And I'm going to say sprites equals that. So I'm going to make an empty list. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to say sprites.append player sprites dot append uh, enemy. I see what I did there. And I'm going to say sprites dot append power up. And then down here what I'll do I'm going to say for sprites in sprites sprite dot update. Now again this is not a beginner tutorial so I expect that you understand what this structure does and how it works. If you don't you shouldn't be watching this video yet. Um, go and watch one of my other tutorials. They explain it very well. For sprites in sprites, I'm going to say sprite.render. Okay, so that'll, that'll iterate through that entire loop, and it will render every sprite that is in it. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, couldn't I just combine these two processes? And the answer is yes, you could. Um, but for now, let's just keep them separate. I think you'll find that might help you later. You might need to make some changes. Okay, so you can see how it's still working exactly as it was working before. Okay, so yeah, I think that's about it for this particular one. So what we did was we added the update method to the sprite class. We added dx and dy to control the x speed and the y speed. The update method just adds dx and dy to the, the, the x and the y coordinates. And then we also created a little sprites list so that we can keep our code just a little bit shorter 
and cleaner. And that is that. Stay tuned for more.